In 2005, Capcom released arguably the quintessential game of the decade and one of the greatest video games of all time, Resident Evil 4, completely revolutionizing the action horror genre. Originally a GameCube exclusive, it released to praising review across the board. Almost everyone loved it, and for good reason, being ported over 11 times in its lifetime and still more to come, I'm sure. When Capcom announced that Resident Evil 4 will be following in the recent trend of remakes, I was quietly and cautiously optimistic. Others have been quite vocal in their lack of interest in a remake, and understandably so. The original is very much playable and very enjoyable even now, nearly 20 years later. It's still a game that's easy to pick up and play for newcomers and old fans alike. Resident Evil has always had its ups and downs. It's very many ups and downs and the remakes have been no exception. While Resident Evil 2 was a wonderful addition to the family of remakes, Resident Evil 3, however, was a different story, leaving a bad taste for a lot of fans. It was quite disappointing, mostly from Capcom's terrible attempt to push in a multiplayer game that nobody asked for. Originally meant to be downloadable content for Resident Evil 2, Capcom decided to bundle their new multiplayer game, Resident Evil Resistance, with Resident Evil 3, and to sell as a full price game, and the quality of both was obvious. Now it's time to judge Resident Evil 4 on its own merits and decide whether it can stand on its own two feet or merely live in the shadow of the original. Where's everyone going? Bingo? I'll be avoiding spoilers for the most part in this video because I'd rather not spoil any of the major or even minor set piece changes. I prefer you get to experience that for yourself and not be ruined by a video that you might just glance over in. It was his first day as a cop. Bright eyed and bushy tailed Leon Kennedy found himself in the nightmare that was the Raccoon City incident, where a shady corporation called Umbrella accidentally released a virus that turned people into monsters, zombies, and otherwise. After he and Claire had escaped, he joined a special forces program where he was trained to be an elite operative. Later, he is assigned a mission to rescue the president's kidnapped daughter, Ashley Graham, from a mysterious cult deep in the mountains of Spain called the Los Illuminados, or the Enlightened Ones, and uncover their plot to dominate the world with an ancient parasite they dub Las Placas. The story doesn't diverge too far from the original but only adds to it, reworking many of the events to make it feel more grounded. While Leon retains a few of his dorky one-liners, he's way less of an action hero and more of what we got from Resident Evil 2. Just now, he's learned to kick people in the face. Ashley, the damsel in distress, is less of a plot device for contrivance, and is now more of a developed and interesting character that I actually came to care about. Unlike her 2005 counterpart, this Ashley has character development and grows from a terrified damsel in distress to a capable and likable character. Unlike her in the original, she actually has a reason for being separated from Leon, and not being an idiot and running away when it's convenient. Although, in the original, it was always a breath of fresh air when you got reprieve from her. I very much loved Ashley's character in this game. The development between Leon and Ashley was refreshing and interesting. Listening to the casual flirting between them was a great touch, catching me off guard. The interactions were fun and cute and didn't overstay their welcome. Hey, Leon, there's some armor. Bet you could use it like a bulletproof vest. <laughs> Little old-fashioned for my taste. Mm, too bad. I think you'd look pretty dashing. Luis's backstory has also been expanded upon, a character I thought was a completely missed opportunity in the original. We get a lot more screen time with him and get to understand his personality and history quite a bit more. The charismatic ladies man with a guilty conscience is a frequent reoccurring character that helps Leon and Ashley, not only through the narrative but gameplay as well. I loved his sections and his presence always put a smile on my face with his witty remarks and cheerful demeanor. There's a familiar yet enigmatic shadow that trails Leon, Ada Wong, a sort of deus ex machina character that shows up to guide Leon when the plot needs her to. Making her first appearance in Resident Evil 2, she's become less of a spy and more of a James Bond super agent, grappling hook and all, extremely intelligent, acrobatic, and impressively cunning. Her character here isn't too different from the original, although here she feels a little bit more sympathetic and shows a lot more care for Leon. As far as performance goes, most modern Resident Evil games have had pretty good voice acting, but there's something that just irks me about Ada's. From what I can tell, this is Lily Goes, the actress for Ada's first role in a video game, and it shows. When she's interacting with the other performers, she just feels out of place, like she's trying to act, Sorry. making it feel unnatural. But my little helper is creating quite the commotion. Everything will work out just fine. As long as you can keep your dog under control. 
I'm sure Ms. Go was a fine actress, but her performance here isn't something that I could really look past. It definitely took me out and is the only real glaring issue. What can I really say about this game other than it's just downright gorgeous? The rendering on Leon's jacket to the moonlight seeping through the naked tree branches. There's not really a lot I can say on a technical level without you just really looking at it and judging for yourself. Capcom has found a new foundation on which to lay the building blocks of its new titles since 2017 with the RE engine, which was first used during development of Resident Evil 7, replacing Capcom's old proprietary engine, the MT Framework, and to great effect. Resident Evil 4 looks incredible, and their realistic look has continued to fit the tone of the previous remakes thus far, and this is no different. The art direction, the lighting, the models, the textures makes Resident Evil 4 one of the most visually impressive games on the market today. Let's not forget about performance, however. I played on a GTX 3060 Ryzen 7 with 32 gigs of RAM at 1440p at 120 frames a second at relatively high settings and it ran buttery smooth and looked gorgeous. Very few times did I experience frame stutter or frame drops, in fact it was so infrequent I just almost didn't mention it. As far as sound goes, there's yet to be a mainline Resident Evil game that I haven't been impressed with, and Resident Evil 4 is no different. To the moment you're in control of Leon, the tone is set and the sounds creep in. Soaking in the ambience as the wind rustles the branches around you, leaves falling, crows cawing in the distance, the gate door creaking long forgotten by its masons. The ambience is easily at its strongest in the beginning before you've come accustomed to everything to come. Damn, this is exactly what Resident Evil 2 was leading up to. I wasn't fully confident that Capcom could pull it off, but they did. They very much did. Guns feel heavy and sound powerful, shooting Ganados feels impactful. The parry system is a welcome addition as well. Being able to parry axes, molotovs, crossbow bolts, a scythe block as attack. The knife is your best friend in this game and it's beyond emphasized. Utilizing the knife gives you the greatest chance of survival. It can do pretty much everything a weapon needs to do and more. Increasing the skill ceiling for what is possible making for a lot of scenarios that make you feel like a complete badass. The knife now has a durability meter, which makes you weigh the odds of its use during combat, especially early on when stabbing just a few enemies will break it. The firearms remain pretty faithful to their original counterparts. The classic pistol feels good to use, it's overall a good weapon, not the best, but far from the worst. The red dot, now being an add-on for the starting pistol only, was an interesting choice. I'm not really okay with the removal of mechanics or functions in games, and then adding them back in a limited fashion then pretending as though it's something more mechanically deep than what it actually is, but I think it's played to good effect here, especially when compared to the other pistols like the Red 9. A slower firing but much more powerful pistol in comparison to the rest. I dabbled with the other pistols but stuck with the Red 9 for my first playthrough as it was the gun I always went for as a kid, for its unique design. Both of the snipers still pop heads in one shot, the shotgun still has massive spread and can sweep enemies. And to everyone's surprise and delight, they kept the RPG, which does in fact still one shot most bosses. Ah, anything else I can help you with? <laughs> well now, time to cause some mayhem. The merchant makes his glorious return as well, sporting a new voice actor with quite a few more lines. Let's do some business. The Merchant is easily my favorite character in the game. It's always a breath of fresh air seeing the blue flame dance by the door of Reprieve, getting your vest and knife repaired, seeing the new weapon that he might have in stock, or perhaps even taking a break from the main game to take on some side quests. Something new to the remake, kinda. The original game had a single side quest that had you shoot blue medallions for a reward, but here there's a lot more fun side missions you can take on for rewards in the form of spinels. A special currency that can be obtained by killing specific enemies, but mostly from completing the requests. Which can be redeemed for special items, such as crafting material and even special weapons only obtained through the spinels. The shooting gallery has also been reworked, having a selection of challenges to take on, where you can earn tokens based on your performance to get charms that have quite a few interesting and unique stats. Others just feel odd and pretty worthless, but overall the shooting gallery is pretty fun to take a break from the main game, and if you're bad like me, you can spend hours completing all the challenges. The treasures, such as gems and jewelry, have also been reworked. Instead of gems being specific to a certain socket, they're more universal this time, and the price multiplier is based on the color you socket into them. 
So if you don't have a certain gem for that socket but still want to sell it to get something out of it, no problem. Just socket any round or square gem into their respective sockets. The bosses have also been reworked. They're not all too different, just updated and refined to match Leon's new set of skills. I won't be getting into the bosses as I think it's best to consider them spoiler territory. I will however say that's a particular boss fight that has been reworked to great, great effect. Something I was very delighted to see and it was fun to watch as it was to play. Capcom blew it out of the park with this remake. The gameplay is addicting, the story changes are great and are very much welcome, only expanding on the history of the characters and events. I love the development between Ashley and Leon, I love the development of Luis, and even the villains. I kinda wish I had more negative to say, or at least middle of the road things to say, as to not make it look like I'm just singing its praises, but upon two playthroughs, I just loved every moment of it. With that being said, it's a remake of one of the most influential games of all time. It was a lightning in a bottle. Nobody should expect a remake of a game that revolutionized the industry upon release to do it again in the same way or be revolutionary at all. Is Resident Evil 4 Remake revolutionary? No, probably not, but it's a damn good game and faithful to the source material and for that, I highly, highly recommend it. Hey everybody, what's up? Thanks for watching the video, I really appreciate it. Uh, sorry it took so long, I know it's been a long time since my Resident Evil 2 review, and I hope to do a lot more in the future. And if you'd like to see more, please like and subscribe. And I know everyone hates it when YouTubers say that, but it genuinely does help. <laughs> and it definitely uh, definitely shows interest in future projects, and I hope to be doing this more often. And I like to do a whole lot more of it because this is really fun, and I love doing long-form content. And hopefully I can, you know, get quite a bit better at this and, and show off my art at the same time. A big shout out to Half Enlightened One for helping me with the... Uh, the, ske the Leon sketch for the thumbnail. Uh, her Twitter will be in the description. And thank you for, to uh, all my patrons and stuff. And I know you guys really uh, didn't didn't exactly see this coming, but um, either way, you're getting a big shout out because I love you guys and I really appreciate all your support and especially all your support through uh, this whole year so far. Here's a list of them on screen. You can see. And uh, yeah, hope to see you guys next time uh, whenever Mercenaries mode comes out.